What you see here is an apple with iron nails in it. Back in the days when supplements did not exist, this was an iron supplement. The acidic matrix of the apple would extract iron from the nails. It would then remove the nails, eat the apple, and get plenty of iron, for example, to treat anemias. To our body, iron is a very precious mineral, so much so that we do a very good job at recycling it. The human body contains on average 5 grams of iron, but only a few milligrams are lost every day and need to be matched with iron coming from food. We lose this iron with our dead skin, hair, nails, sweat, and cells from the gastrointestinal tract. Our blood, however, has a lot of iron, and so bleeding can dramatically increase our iron losses. For this reason, women in their reproductive years need more than twice as much iron as other adults to make up for blood losses associated with the menstrual cycle. The adult recommended daily allowance for iron is 8 mg, for adult women until menopause is 18 mg. But iron is a double-edged sword. If on one hand it is easy to not get enough, on the other hand it is also easy to get too much. And unfortunately, our body cannot easily get rid of excess iron after it is absorbed. And even a small excess of iron in our body is detrimental because it is a powerful pro-oxidant metal. By itself, iron generates free radical reactions, creating oxidative stress and inflammation that will damage our body's cells, promote aging, and increase risk for degenerative diseases such as cancer, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. For this reason, the upper level for iron is set at 45 mg, so that the gap between too little and too much is not too wide. Iron is really one of those nutrients for which we have to make an extra effort to make sure we get just about what we need, not too much less and not too much more. And for the same reason, most multi-mineral supplements are divided by age and gender. Since men and older women need less iron, supplements for them also contain less iron to avoid unnecessary oxidative damage. The main function for iron in our body is oxygen transport and storage. Iron is part of the heme group of hemoglobin for oxygen transport in red blood cells and of myoglobin for oxygen uptake and storage in muscle cells. In other words, we need iron both to transport oxygen from our lungs to our tissues and to get it inside our cells where we use it to burn glucose and lipids. And we also need iron to efficiently extract energy from such nutrients, as iron is part of the electron transport chain in our cell's mitochondria. Iron is a cofactor of many different enzymes. It is involved in immune function, in drug detoxification pathways, and many other things. If iron is deficient, red blood cells number and hemoglobin content will decrease, resulting in a decreased oxygen carrying capacity of our blood. This condition is called anemia. Iron deficiency is not only cause of anemia, but it's the most frequent everywhere around the world. Indeed, iron deficiency anemia is the world leading nutrient deficiency, and it affects between 1 and 2 billion people worldwide. Pale skin, weakness, easy fatigue after minor efforts, such as walking fast or climbing the stairs, short breath, poor temperature regulation, cold fingers, palpitations are all symptoms of anemia. Some segments of the population are more at risk for iron deficiency. This include, of course, women until menopause, and even more so during pregnancy and lactation when their iron needs are further increased. Children also need more iron to sustain their rapid growth. Some athletes are more at risk for iron deficiency. Any situation in which blood is repeatedly lost, including frequent blood donations, stomach ulcers, colon cancer, and intestinal parasitic infections, increases the risk for iron deficiency. In developing tropical countries, parasite infection together with heavy sweating and a poor diet work together to determine a dramatically high rate of iron deficiency anemia. Iron absorption from food is on average 18%, but it can increase based on body needs. In meat and fish, about half of the iron is contained in hemoglobin and myoglobin. This iron, called heme iron, is absorbed slightly more efficiently at a rate of about 
The absorption of non-heme iron, in contrast, is variable and is usually between 2 and 20%. Non-heme iron is the other half of the iron in meat and fish and the only type of iron found in plants' food. Vitamin C greatly enhances iron absorption both by keeping it in its reduced state and by directly binding it so they can be absorbed together. A few sips of orange juice provide enough vitamin C to double the amount of non-heme iron absorbed from a meal. In contrast, sudden increases in phytate, oxalate, fiber, tannins, and zinc all decrease non-heme iron absorption. Black tea is one of the greatest enemies of iron absorption, and people with higher iron requirements should not drink it with their meals. High temperature cooking also reduces iron bioavailability by oxidizing it. Eating raw liver with lemon juice was an ancient remedy for anemia, and now you can understand why. When non-heme iron is eaten with meat or fish, its absorption increases. We are not exactly sure what is it in meat and fish that accomplishes this, and so we call it the meat protein factor. Very likely it is the presence of meat peptides that enhances non-heme iron absorption. For example, if you eat whole grain bread alone, its non-heme iron will be absorbed less efficiently than if you eat a whole grain bread turkey sandwich, because the meat protein factor in turkey will enhance iron absorption from the bread as well. If you also add a few slices of tomato to your sandwich, then vitamin C will further enhance iron absorption from both your turkey and your whole grain bread. Shellfish and organ meats are excellent sources of iron. Lentils, beans, and other legumes also have a lot. Non-organ meat and fish contain less, but because half of it is heme iron and therefore it is more efficiently absorbed, they are also considered good sources of iron. Whole grains can significantly contribute to our iron needs, as well as nuts, seeds, and some fruits and vegetables. On the other hand, refined cereals, eggs, milk, and dairy are not good sources of iron. Some foods, such as breakfast cereal, may be fortified with iron. Iron fortification is a very complicated matter because it can be very useful for one segment of the population, such as women in their reproductive years that need more than twice as much iron and often have a hard time getting it, but on the other hand it can be a problem for other segments of the population who already tend toward iron overload. A single serving of chili with meat provides double the iron RDA for men. A single ounce of breakfast cereals, too. Vitamin C supplements increase iron absorption. Many people also take multimineral supplements, so it doesn't take too much to go above and beyond the upper limit for iron. And like we said before, too much iron is just as detrimental because it promotes oxidative damage.